Hey GX community, this is GX Bob introducing to you guys another wonderful product. It is a product that is going to solve a problem all of us do-it-yourselfers all share. It is a switch panel made by a company called Oxbeam. But before I even open the box, I am going to first explain to you guys what the problem is we all currently have. I'm using stuff I found in my garage to represent all the stuff that you have in your trucks right now. Okay, so I got this to represent uh, fog lights. I have this to represent your LED light bar up on your roof, right? I got um, LED light bars that are probably behind your grill. I also got these pod lights that are sitting on top of your hood, right? So all these lights that you guys currently have installed in your truck, and I'm sure some of you have more, some of you guys have less, but I'm choosing four lights as a, an average, okay? So with these lights come with wires that go to the battery. And with these lights, the only way you turn them on and off, they all come with switches that you have to hook up to, right? So let me go ahead and lay all of this on the table to show you what it actually looks like if you were to stand back and uh, look down onto your engine compartment. So here is the setup inside your engine compartment to your front grill or to your hood or to your rooftop. You got your LED light bar, you got your behind the grill lights, you got your fog lights, you got your pod lights, you have your battery, right? For these to for these to power up, you're gonna to need to run a power and ground to each of these from your battery. So let's go ahead and do that. You got a power and ground going to here. You got a power and ground, right? Going to this light, to the battery. You got a power and ground going to your fog lights and you got a power and ground going to your pod lights, okay? Everything that's powering up all your lights is going to the battery. But in order for all these lights to turn on and off, you gotta have switches. So you got one switch to light up your light bar. You got another switch to light up your pod lights. You got another switch to light up your fog lights. And then you got another switch to uh, light up your grill lights or whatever other kind of lights you have. So this is your current layout of your engine compartment and behind your firewall straight underneath your dash this is what it looks like and in order for you to make your car look clean you're going to grab a bunch of zip ties and you're going to do this and then you're going to do this and then you're going to clump it all up and then you're going to do all this and you're going to have four different switches and you're trying to find space somewhere on your console to put all these switches right same thing right here what oxbeam does is it gets rid of all this let's get rid of all this let's get rid of all this but what oxbeam does is it puts in a fuse box for you right here you're gonna have to run wires to the fuse box just like this power and ground straight to the fuse box not straight to the battery and to power up this fuse box you got a power line that goes straight here see and the great thing about this is you got one wire that goes straight into your cabin straight inside your firewall from your fuse box and these are where all your switch panels go out of one box it's going to be a console with eight different switches to your liking okay this is the setup that oxbeam is giving you guys to clean up all your mess so let's go ahead and open up the oxbeam box so on their website, they actually have an option for a six gang channel or an eight gang channel, depending on how many buttons you want. I chose the eight one because I want to add on to my accessories. You can keep it at six if you don't have that much. Okay, so let's go ahead and open it up. There you go, wow. Right off hand, I noticed a little sticker that says mounting bracket and it's hidden on the inside right here. So let's not forget about that. We got our instructions right here. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Okay, fairly easy to follow. Ooh, look at this. It also has an app for you to use instead of buttons. So you could go on your cell phone and just hit the buttons on here and it'll turn on your lights for you. 
great convenience. Right here, you got sticker covers for your control panel. So you can customize your control panel. So right here it says light bar, light cubes, roof lights, rear lights, backup lights, cargo lights, fog lights. You got, wow, they're amber lights, grill lights, rack lights, bumper lights, front, side, hood, flood. Wow, there's just a lot of uh, option to choose from here to customize your control panel. It even has a start and stop if you, if you don't want to put a picture on your control panel right here. Look, GPS, radio, wow, look at this, fuel. Maybe you want to um, put an extra fuel pump or an extra fuel canister or just to open up your, your fuel locks or something. Look at this, daytime running lights, stereo fish box, camera, look, driver's side heat, passenger side heat, strobe lights. So where do all these stickers go? Let's take a look at the control panel. This goes inside your cockpit right here. It's got LED lights behind here. It's got an on and off switch right here in case you want to turn off the whole entire thing. Turn on the whole entire thing all at once right here. The good thing about these buttons is you can have them as on and off, you can have them as momentary, or you can have them as pulse. So you can have three different types of switches programmed to each one individually, okay? And the good thing about this is you can change the backlight color. If you look at the box right here, the backlight color can be yellow, green, blue, or red, depending on what type of a light scene you want inside your cabin. And right here, right above, each picture will have an, an additional LED letting you know that those are the lights, those are the switches that are on or off, okay? The ones that don't have them lit, that means they're not in use right now. See that? So with this control panel, all you have to do is just peel off these stickers and place them wherever you want, okay? So let's move on to the next one. Here is the fuse box itself. With one tab to open it up, it's already preset with fuses in here, 30 amps, 20 amps, 10 amps, 5 amps. And if you look underneath the box, they give you spare fuses and a fuse remover. So here's your power, here's your ground that you hook up to. This is your, your accessory right here. So it's very easy to use. These are all Phillips screws. You hook up all your lights, your power and ground to each one of these little tiny holes right here and you tighten them down. If anything was to pop, these fuses are the first to go. And taking a look at this, getting a feel for this, this is also claiming that it is waterproof. If you take a look at the side of the box, waterproof. Let's move on to the next item right here. It comes with a 60 amp circuit breaker to protect your switch assembly. So this is a major plus. Okay, and it comes all the, with the necessary brackets. This is for your control panel. You could install this anywhere you want. And the good thing about this control panel is you could actually hide your wires on the bottom. It has a little channel going to the bottom and it has a channel going to the top. If you decide to route your wires on the top, see bottom or top, it's like this. It's gonna end up screwing onto you right here. And then you're gonna screw this onto your dash somewhere if you don't want to. You can actually put 3M double-sided tape right here and attach it to anywhere on your console. Let's take a look. This is the single wire harness I am talking about that's going to go from your fuse box straight through your firewall and into your driver's cabin. This is it right here, guys. Just one cable, one cable that's going to control everything. It's going to go right here. You just plug it in. This goes inside your cockpit and you're done. One cable, guys, okay? And the rest is a zip ties, hardware, and let's look at this hidden bracket on the side right here. Look at this. Take a look at this. Wow, holy smokes. This is the bracket that's gonna be holding your fuse panel somewhere in your engine compartment. So, you can install it like this, you can install it like this you can install it upside down like this there's so many different ways to install this inside your engine compartment so we're gonna have to look for a good place to set this okay so let's go ahead and get started okay guys right after we unbox everything from Oxbeam I decided to lay everything out on the table to show you what it's gonna look like installed in your vehicle right here you still got your lights your light bars your pod lights your I don't know your Raptor lights they're gonna have your power and ground 
Every single light is going to have a power and ground that is going to go to your fuse box that is provided by Oxbeam. From your fuse box, you're going to take the power cable that is provided by Oxbeam, you're going to wire it to your circuit breaker. From your circuit breaker, you're going to use another power cable provided by Oxbeam and attach it to your battery. From your fuse box, you're going to take the single ground cable also provided by Oxbeam and you're going to attach it to the battery. The winner of this whole entire package right here, the biggest selling point right here is the single cable that attaches from your fuse box that is wired to everything here just by one single cable. It's going to route through your firewall. It's going to go straight to your control panel right here sitting on your dash. You're going to control your light pods, your stealth lights, your roof lights, your raptor lights, all on a single panel right here. Before doing any type of electrical work, you're going to want to disconnect your neg negative terminal off your battery. So let's go ahead and do that. Next, you're going to want to go ahead and disengage every single switch that you want attached to your brand new control panel. Okay, I've chosen two. One is for my pod lights and one is for my stealth LED light bar. What I did was right here where I'm going to unplug it, the portion that I'm going to slide back through the firewall, I labeled it pod lights right here. This is to ensure that I know what light is going to what inside the fuse panel. Okay, same thing right here. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect it and I put light bar right here. Next, you're going to grab a long flathead screwdriver and you're going to poke at the rubber grommet right here at your firewall in order to create an opening again so you could grab your switch wires that are inside your driver's cabin and pull them back into the engine compartment. There's one of them. Let's grab the second one here. Here's the second one. So these are the two lights that I routed back into my engine compartment, the, the plugs, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna separate them because I'm gonna work on one light at a time. Okay, so right here, this right here is my pod lights and this is my LED light bar. So let's do one at a time. With my pod lights, I am going to disconnect the power and ground that is supplying the feed to this line. So go straight to the battery and disconnect the power and disconnect the ground from one of your lights. I routed the power line that supplies the pod lights to this wire right here. So I'm going to remove it off of the battery. There, and here is the ground that is supplying my pod light. So I want to disconnect it off the ground terminals. Now that we disconnected the power and ground for the pod lights, we are going to separate it from everything and put it aside. We're going to take this, we're going to put it aside just like this so we can work on this later. Okay, now we are going to work on our light bar. This is the power line supplying the light bar, so I'm going to disconnect this off the power. I'm going to put the screw back loosely. I want to take this power line and I'm going to put it aside. And this is the ground cable that is supplying my light bar, so I'm going to disconnect this off the negative terminal. Wow, there's a lot of spaghetti wires going around here. Clean up all these wires a little bit. Okay, remove the ground. I want to put the screw back so I don't lose the screw. Now that I got my light bar disassembled, I want to set it aside. Set my pod lights aside and these are the two power and grounds that I am going to be working with when installing my fuse panel, okay? Now we're going to look for a location for our Oxbeam fuse box right here. 
we're looking inside this big open space right right here and we're gonna have to figure out a, some type of bracket or some type of installation that's gonna make this all work so what I decided and you don't have to follow me you can make your own bracket but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this bracket right here that holds up our black cover I don't think it's needed right now so we're gonna go ahead and remove this it's a 12 millimeter down here and it's a 12 millimeter on the side Let's go ahead and take this bracket with us to the work table. We're going to place it on our bracket and we are going to drill a hole that's going to hold this fuse box to this bracket. See where this hole is? We're only going to drill one hole. Okay, it's going to go right there. Here's the fender wall. You're going to see all of this in a bit. But let's go ahead and drill one hole right there that's going to put a bolt and a nut through here to tighten it. I have a unit bit to make a small hole into a larger diameter hole. Flip it over to deburr it. Make sure you don't cut yourself. After you drill the hole for your fuse box to line up, you're going to want to put two pieces of 3M double-sided tape right here. Now you're going to want to line up the hole in your fuse box and the hole in your bracket and make sure it's straight. And make sure on the other side, these two openings are visible underneath right here. It's going to go just like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and tape it down. Make sure everything is straight. Okay. Once it's straight, I'm going to turn it over. See these two openings right here are out in the open for you. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the hardware that came with the ox beam package. I'm going to take a fastener and a washer. I'm going to go ahead and stick it through here. On the other side, I'm going to take another washer and I'm going to take this 10 millimeter nut. I'm going to go ahead and tighten it. Tighten it down with a Phillips and a 10 millimeter wrench. Now, you are done. Now we're going to want to grab our fuse box and we're going to grab our circuit breaker. Take off the plastic cover of your circuit breaker so the terminals are exposed. Set the cover aside. Take off the cover of your fuse box. Set that aside. Now you're going to want to grab your short your short it's about six seven inches of power cable and you're going to attach it to one end of the circuit breaker it's a 10 millimeter it comes in here loose and going to want to tighten down this 10 millimeter There you go. You're going to want to open up this nut right here. Remove it. You're going to take your long power cable, the one that's about uh, one and a half feet. You're going to attach that end to this side of the circuit breaker. Put back your 10 millimeter nut here and tighten it.
there you go it's tighten now you're gonna take your black I mean your clear cover and you're gonna put it back on here goes on just like this and just snaps into place there you go now you're gonna take your long end right here and you're gonna slip it underneath your fuse cover into this opening you're gonna slide it through here and you're going to attach it to this 10 millimeter you can't mistake in it for this because this one is marked with a red imprint right here so let's go ahead and remove this let's go ahead and put the 10 millimeter right here power cable pretty tight okay now you're going to remove this 10 millimeter nut this is going to be your ground you're going to take the black ground cable that was provided to you you're going to slip it inside underneath right here in this opening and you're going to attach it to this terminal right here Make sure you tighten this in by hand first. You do not want to strip anything. After I caught a few threads, I'm going to go ahead and use my power, my motor right here. There you go. Next, I'm going to grab my accessory wire that came with the box. I am going to take the white plug side. I'm going to slip it under until it goes through this opening. And I am going to plug it in to this two-prong connector right here until it snaps into place. There you go. The reason why we are we're routing everything through this hole is because once you put the cover on, it's going to be hidden just like this. It's going to route underneath. See that? There's one more plug that actually goes inside of here, and it is your switch. This white connector that is going to plug into this connector right here, where we're going to save this until a little later, okay? We don't want all these wires running all over the place while we are doing the rest of the other wires. So let's go ahead and close this up. Let's go to the next step. Now we're going to take our original setup and see this bolt right here. We're going to go ahead and remove this bolt. We're going to take this bolt that came with our original bracket and we are going to slip it on this bent up bracket that we just created right here. It's gonna go through here just like this. Okay, now we're gonna screw this bolt back inside the original hole where that bolt came from. Go ahead and get a couple of threads on there. You're gonna to wanna to snug it all the way in, but don't tighten it because we're gonna to need to keep this in motion in order to gain access to put in our wires uh, once that time comes okay so go ahead and take your power and ground and route it underneath here route it around your OEM fuse box just like this around here for our next step our next step you're going to want to take your power and your accessory wires and separate it from the ground because the ground cable is going to go around your OEM fuse box through this little crevice right here and it's going to go to your ground terminal. I'm going to loop it underneath to keep a clean job.
and I'm going to hook up this ground onto one of these terminals on here with my Allen key. For our next step, our next step, we are going to take our circuit breaker. Okay, we're going to take our accessory and separate it from our power cable, and we are going to work on this one next. Uh, Lexus gave you a really nice slot right here that I'm going to take a couple of the ox beams uh, tie wrap the zip ties that came with their box and I'm going to slip it through here I'm going to take two because this is a pretty wide circuit breaker I'm going to take two I'm going to put their circuit breaker on the side right here and I'm going to zip tie each side right here so it doesn't fall out it doesn't scoot it doesn't move There you go. Don't worry about uh, accessibility to this cap, you guys. It's gonna be very rare that you're ever gonna need to remove this cap in order to reset your circuit breaker. Okay, if you have to keep constantly reset a 60 amp circuit breaker, you got bigger problems than just this, okay? You got some electrical, major electrical issues inside your system somewhere. So, it's okay to zip tie both of them, do it as tight as possible, and you can set it and forget it. Don't even worry about it anymore. You don't want to hook up the battery yet because we're not done with the installation. Next, we're going to remove the fuse cover. There is one tab back here. All you have to do is push on the tab. The cover comes right off. Go ahead and place it aside. We're going to take our accessory wire that came out of the Oxbeam fuse box. We're going to measure it. We're just going to take some slack. I'm going to wrap it around the fuse box at this corner. I'm going to go ahead and just cut it right here. That, this should be long enough throw away the excess. I'm going to take the ends of it and I'm going to strip off the coating. I'm going to wind up. I'm going to fold it in half and I am going to slip it inside of this blue bud connector. Once I slip it in the blue bud connector I'm going to hold on to it because the next step is crimping the bud connector. So it smashes that metal barrel in there to keep both of the wires together. Now I'm going to do the pull test to make sure it's not going to come loose on me. And now we're good. Now we're going to look at our fuse box from Lexus and we're going to look for an accessory wire. We're going to look for a fuse to pull out, one that only turns on with the ignition. And this is the fuse that we're going to share to turn on our aux beam switch panel inside of our cabin. So the one fuse that I found was this 15 amp right here, which controls your rear windshield wipers. I'm going to remove this 15 amp fuse. And I'm going to install it on our add-on fuse that came from Oxbeam right here. But the problem is the Lexus fuses don't have those long prongs that stick out. So we are going to have to find our own 15 amp to install here in order for our rear windshield wipers to work while working with the Oxbeam switch panel. Luckily, if you look on the back of the Oxbeam cover, fuse cover, they give you spare fuses to use. So we're gonna take out their 15 amp And we are going to install it on the add-on fuse right here. After you install the 15 amp right here, you're going to plug it back in to the Lexus OEM fuse box. There you go. I'm going to wrap this around here, make it neat and orderly. We're going to go ahead and go back to our OEM cover. And right here, we are going to cut off a little notch. I'm going to get my same crimpers and just crimp a little tiny notch right here in order for our wires to go through the fuse box without it being pinched. I want to bend this on the inside. Just like that. Bend it down. Now you got a good little opening right there. I'm going to slip my wires right here so it 
goes through this cut right here. Just put the cover back on and let's check it out. Perfect. Make sure the wire could move in and out very easily. This is a sign that it's not pinched. Okay, so let's move to the next step. Let's go ahead and remove the cover off the aux beam fuse box. Set the cover aside. Now, we are going to concentrate on this four prong connector right here. Go back to your work table and grab this one cable that is your switch that connects to your switch. It's got a four white prong connector right here. This is the female side. We're gonna slip it underneath here through this opening where your power and your ground cable is coming through. Okay. Go ahead and lock it in until it snaps into place. Now we're gonna route this underneath the fuse panel. We're going to take the other end, this side, that's going to go to your switch inside your driver's cabin, and we're going to route it through that rubber boot. At your kick paddle, you're going to want to grab your plug and go ahead and guide it through. Next, go ahead and bring your control panel right here and go ahead and plug it in. We are not doing the installation yet. We are just going to hook this up in order to test. There is a notch right here. There's a notch that is going to follow this guide right here. There's also a notch right here at 12 o'clock. Okay. Once you plug it in all the way until it hits this orange rubber, you're going to want to take this screw cap and screw it in clockwise all the way until the thread ends. Do the pull test, make sure nothing comes off. Now it's all connected, okay? Let's go ahead and hook up our lights. Now we're gonna go ahead and install our lights to our fuse panels, okay? So my very first light right here is my LED light bar behind my grill. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the relay. We're not gonna need this relay anymore. We're gonna chop this all off, but the important thing we're gonna to wanna to do is check the relay, I mean, check the fuse that came with your light stick. So we're gonna go take a look at it. So it's gonna be a 30 amp. So we're gonna to need to install this light switch to the fuse panel that's gonna to go to a 30 amp inlet, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look. Right here, we got 30 amps, 20 amps, 10 amps, and 5 amps. We are going to hook it up to the 30 amp, which is channel number 1 right here. I'm going to hook the power and ground to this 30 amp. This goes straight to the relay. I am going to chop off the power and ground that is supplied to the light bar. Okay? When I put power and ground to these two wires, it is going to light up my light bar. So these are the two wires that I want to run to my aux beam fuse panel. So let's chop it off. Just take this and set it aside. You could toss it if you want. I normally save the relay and I normally save the fuse that came with it, okay, for other projects. So right here, this is what we want. I'm going to take this and I'm going to route it very nice and cleanly into the fuse box. Go ahead and go underneath. Through the fuse opening right here. I'm going to want to take off the shielding of each wire, maybe about half an inch. I'm going to wind up the wire so it doesn't fray. It's easier to stick inside the fuse inlets right here. Now I'm going to get a Phillips screwdriver and loosen these up. 
turn it counterclockwise for positive and ground. Take your wires, stick the black into the ground port, and tighten it by turning it clockwise. Do the pull method, make sure it doesn't come out. Now do the same thing with power. There you go. You can go ahead and slide your wires back out. Now you can go ahead and zip tie this and make it nice and neat and zip tie it to your OEM harness down there. I tucked it between the main harness and the fender wall right here. Next we're going to work on our pod lights. Our pod lights have a pair, okay? You got power and ground going to your driver's side and you have a power and ground going to your passenger side. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and snip it off at the relay right here because we don't need the relay anymore. But right here we have a really long extension since uh, this was the closest to the driver's side we're going to cut it right off at the relay right here so this side's going to be a little longer so in order for both of these pod lights to work we're going to have to provide power and ground to both so we are going to have to wrap the red with the red and the black with the black now we're going to take the red and wind it with the red we're going to take the black and wind it with the black Don't forget to check what type of fuse your pods were using. This right here is a 20 amp, so we're going to look for a 20 amp inside the Oxbeam fuse panel to use. One side at a time, I'm going to take one set, go ahead and round it underneath your fuse box here. There you go, give it enough slack so you can have room to work with. Then I'm going to grab the other set and I'm going to route it underneath the fuse panel. There you go. Now I'm going to wind the red with the red and the black with the black. But before that, we have to find out which channel we're going to use. Remember, when we checked our fuse holder, it stated it was a 20 amp. So we're going to use a 20 amp channel right here. Right? This is 30, 30, 20, 20, 10, 10, and 5, and 5. So if you count down 30, 30, here's the 20. 20 is going to be on channel number 3. So on our switch panel, it's going to be button number 3. So let's go ahead and put the positive and ground to this. I'm going to wind these together instead of putting it on separate channels because when I push my button for the pod lights, I want both the pod lights to turn on, not left and right separately. Okay, so let's go ahead and wind these up. Turn it counterclockwise to open up the channel. Stick the positive lead in there. Now turn it clockwise to lock it in. There. Now we're going to do the same for the ground. Take off about half an inch. I'm going to wind them together. I'm going to open up the ground side of this 20 amp. By turning it counterclockwise, I'm going to stick in my ground lead in there. I'm going to turn it clockwise to lock it in.
after it's locked in I'm gonna pull I'm gonna pull on it to get rid of the slack there you go here is the slack now I can go ahead and close up the cover and let's go ahead and clean up the wires Just go find a place to tuck these in. I tucked everything between the main harness and the fender wall right here. Shove it in between. You can go ahead and make an additional step by zip tying all these to Lexus OEM harness down there. Our next step is we're going to build a bracket support to hold up this other end. Because once we tighten down this bolt right here, it's still only supported on one side. We're going to build a bracket using the ox beam bracket that came with their package. Here is one of the brackets that came with the ox beam box. We are going to measure three and three quarters down here. and We're going to mark it with a piece of tape because this is where we're going to make a 90 degree bend. Okay, three and three quarters. I want to take a pair of pliers. If you have a table vise, then great for you. I don't. So I'm going to have to resort to this and just bend it. Go to the Oxbeam hardware kit. You're going to want to grab two of these fasteners. And you're going to want to grab two of these 10 millimeter nuts. You are going to use these fasteners and you're going to put inside these holes to attach to the fuse panel and to attach to the OEM bracket. But because these fasteners don't fit in these holes, they're slightly a little bigger than the hole. We're going to grab our unibit and we're going to open up the hole just one step. There you go. Go ahead and bring your bracket. This is the hole and bracket on the side of your ox beam fuse panel that you're going to be using to attach this part of the ox beam bracket. Okay, it's going to go underneath just like this. You're going to put a screw and a nut in there. And this angled portion, this 90 degree bend right here is going to attach to your Lexus OEM bracket. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that right now. Make sure you got a Phillips and make sure you got a 10 millimeter open end ready to go. So let's get started. Go ahead and tighten everything in. Guys might want to do your final checks. Make sure everything is tight. Both of your terminals for your battery and ground is tight. Your circuit breaker is not popped. All the wiring is complete. Your boot is put back. Remember what our fuse panel looked like? Well, this is the sequence that it's going to go in. It's already preset at box number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So whatever you tie to inlet number one at 30 amp, it's going to go to this button. Whatever you tie to number two, it's going to go to this button and so forth. Number three, four, five, six, and so forth. Okay. 
So luckily, my LED light bar is a 30 amp and it's gonna go to switch number one, which is gonna be this button. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab some alcohol. Not too much. Gonna wipe, wanna wipe down the surface here. I know that my number one was my LED light bar. Number three was my pod lights. So let's go ahead and choose. Right here, light bar. Let's go ahead and peel light bar and let's stick it on number one. Let's look for pod lights. Do, 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 do. You got something right here called windshield lights. Not sure if I want to use that one though. We got light cubes here. Let's use light cubes for my pod lights. There you go. I'm going to keep the other ones clear because I'm not sure what I want to put there yet. Okay, so let's go ahead and test this. Remember, these only turn on if your accessory turns on. So let's go ahead and turn it on. There you go, my accessory is on. And there we go, lights right up. If I hit this, my light bar should turn on. Let's go check it out. There you go. It's on. Let's go check out the next one. My pod lights. Let's go check it out. There you go. My pod lights are on. If you want to change the backlight of your control panel right here, all you have to do is hold the on and off button and any other button at the same time until a red light appears up here. Let's try it. Hold it together. Now it's in programming mode. You can either use button number one or button number four to change the colors. You're going to have to push it down and rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to push button number four down and rotate it clockwise and let's see the colors change. Now it's pink. Let's do counterclockwise and see what happens. Turning more red. There now it's orange, yellow, green, turquoise. I'm going to keep it on turquoise. I think I like turquoise. Well, if you want to get out of programming mode, go ahead and push on and off again. And now you're set. There you go. Cool. Now you're going to go to your hardware kit that uh, Oxbeam provided you. You're going to choose four of these flush head screws, Phillips, they're flush head. Okay, and we are going to mount them inside these four holes. Actually, we're going to mount them inside these four holes to our control panel, four holes right here. Okay, I'm routing my wires to the long channel down here. And they are going to look like this when it's done. So guys, I, I looked all over the place to mount my switch panel 
and I didn't really want to screw any holes onto any of these panels because I don't know, maybe one day I want to sell the vehicle, it's going to leave a lot of holes. I didn't want to run wires to the center console again. So I found a really good place that's going to be visible to me and I'm going to screw it onto this plastic air vent. This plastic air vent is replaceable and there's nothing underneath except plastic. I still have air coming out of here, no big deal. And if I ever need to replace this, it's super cheap. It's just a square little thin piece. And I'm using the hardware that came with the Oxbeam hardware kit to screw it in. This is the screw right here. I use this screw, I use the washer, and I used a stubby screwdriver and all I did was just screw it down by hand and it worked great. Pretty good. I'm gonna take my wire, I'm gonna shove it underneath here. Let's take a plastic panel removal tool. We're gonna to take off the side plate right here. Go ahead and remove it. You're gonna to wanna to loosen up the rubber right here. We're gonna run our wires. We're going to want to take our plug that's running through the firewall and we're going to route it up the side right here up through this crease right here and up through this rubber piece you can remove this rubber piece and run it behind this rubber piece until you connect the plug with this right here that's so what it looks like i tucked this inside here went up the rubber i connected the plug right here and i tucked it in as far as it would go I shove back this piece of rubber back here. Voila! It's all tucked neat. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to zip tie all this and shove it underneath where my kick panel is. Nicely zip tied. I'm going to put it and squeeze it behind the kick panel 